Okay, good evening. It is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of uh, CFAS to this edition of uh, Rupati, our series of conversation with artists. Our guest this evening is renowned Bharatanatyam dancer, Vidya Subramanian, who trained under renowned guru, Sri S.K. Rajaratnam, and uh, did her Abhinaya training as well under Guru Srimati Kalanithi Narayanan. I will not say too much about her, except that she has been dancing, teaching, and choreographing for over 30 years. We will let Vidya speak for herself and tell us her story. Good evening, Vidya. It is such a privilege and pleasure to be talking to you. Uh, let Good us... evening, Renuka. Such a lovely pleasure to be talking to you as well. Do you remember the, uh, when we met and uh, how we met? Yeah, we met <laughs> so we, yeah, we met so many years ago. Actually, I think uh, in um, which uh, which Sabha was Bharat that? Kalachar. Yeah, Bharat Kalachar. Bharat Kalachar. And uh, you were sitting next to me, and we were watching uh, Malvika's uh, dance. That That's was right. so nice. And, right, uh, and it's yeah, been an association then, of many years. I'm really yeah. happy to be part of this uh, series you've got going. A lovely series indeed. Uh, thank you for inviting me, Renuka. Yeah, and thank you for uh, saying yes to have this uh, conversation. We're all going through immensely challenging times, but we'll, we'll talk about that as we go along, but we'll begin with uh, pleasanter stuff. So now let us tell us about, um, why don't you tell us about your uh, journey through dance? Begin, let's begin at the very beginning from your home and childhood and uh, how your uh, Bharatanatyam journey started and uh, how it got you to where you are today. Over to you, Vidya. Goodness, yeah, that's uh, a long uh, journey, I would say. Um, well, I am uh, an only child. I, my father is a Mridangist. My mother is a Bharatanatyam dancer. She learned from, she along with her sister, they learned from Manguli Dilora Jair and Patapuri Ramaswamy. And they performed uh, quite a bit. And uh, I grew up in this household in Chennai, being exposed to both of these a little. My mother had stopped dancing, but my father would play the Mridangam still. And uh, Appa used to take me to all the kacheris and, uh, you know, I sort of sit there and explain the talam system and uh, the intricacies of the ragas, everything. Oh, so much of it that I learned just listening to those kacheris from Appa uh, sitting there. So was he, was, was he accompanying uh, artists in concert as a Mridangam yes, player? He, yes, he was an AIR graded artist. He was okay. Doing, uh, he, while he had his own company, he was sort of, uh, uh, he would accompany not so much live series, but mostly AIR uh, Kajim. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I would attend a lot of these concerts and also dance performances. So he would take me to everything, right? So growing up, I was exposed to all of this. And then one day I saw Paduka, Dr. Padma Subramanyam, and uh, sort of, uh, it was love at first sight. It was, you know, I just fell in love with her and her communicative skills and the way she was able to get through to every last person in the audience. And uh, I wanted to learn from her. I was an eight year old and I badly wanted to learn from her. And Appa actually took me and uh, put me with her. Um, and uh, after about uh, three years or so, you know, logistical reasons and distance and all kinds of uh, issues with Chennai, driving and all that, she, she herself talked to Guru S.K. Rajaratnam and put me in touch with him. And uh, I did my Arangetram with him when I was 16 years old. Um, but you know, until when you, when you talk about, this is sort of the, you know, the bookmarks I would say, but then until I got to my Arangetram, I was uh, sort of not a very cooperative uh, student. Uh, you see, when I, I remember that I had this vivid memory of uh, uh, my kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Prema. She wrote in the report card, you know, they used to write those comments apart from your grade, I mean, apart from the marks we got. She uh, would, she wrote, um, she's very um, good at studies, but she's very lazy. <laughs> so, you know, how at that time, um, it, what a teacher says really impacts you, right, uh, when you're young. And I think I've sort of, it's stuck in my memory. And all along, I think I've almost lived up to that uh, that name, you know, that, of, that uh, tag that you put on my 
report card uh, about my laziness and sort of um, said, go to dance class. I would go in and out, um, but not particularly engaged. And I was also the stubborn person. And uh, eventually uh, what happened was, uh, but they also took it as a challenge. And when it got to Marigatum, I distinctly remember this moment on stage. I went there and I was, you know, in the presence of this audience, the curtains hadn't even opened, but I could sense the audience. I could feel the energy of that audience. And I was 16 and that moment it hit me and I knew I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. Um, it was sort of such a momentary epiphany almost. And, you know, in the years since then, I've sort of thought about this as to why it was that moment and why it was, um, um, it was such a strong feeling. And I realized, you know, a big part of it is how I love to engage with people, to communicate. And communication is a huge part of uh, why I dance also. And I think being a single child, I've always craved this, uh, the company of others, mm -hmm. that, you know, the conversation. I would always hang out at my neighbor's house and I would choose the houses where there were at least four or five children, never, okay. you know, one or two. <laughs> and so I'd always be at their home. And I think I crave this um, collaborative, uh, you know, energy right from a very early uh, age. And I, at that moment on stage, it was, it, it just felt right, you know, the energy, the sharing of energy with the audience. So I've always loved the performative element of uh, um, being a dancer, um, which is, obviously the culmination of all the hard work we do at home, uh, that goes without saying. So to some extent that I would say is the journey up until Marin Gitram. And then of course, Kalanidhi Mami came into my life and that was life changing. That was, uh, I, I, she's not someone who just teaches you Abhinaya. There is so much more to um, what you get out of any given class with Kalanidhi Mami. And uh, I, that's something I will always treasure. So that I would say is sort of um, how I got to where I was up until I left the US at least. Oh, I, I liked your answer. I've actually asked other uh, artists as well, you know, how, how did you get to be an artist? When did you know that you wanted to be an artist? Was it a gradual organic process or was it an epiphany? And you said it was an epiphany. So I love, I love that uh, answer. You know, one moment when uh, mm -hmm. that moment tells you, this is what my life is going to be. Oh, that's, uh, that's remarkable. So let's uh, move on. You tell us about all those years that you spent uh, in the US, especially in connection with your art. I mean, apart from dance, you've, you've done uh, other allied stuff as well, theater and other things. So why don't you tell us all about your journey of how you moved to the US as a, as a young married uh, uh, girl and uh, then uh, life took off from there. <laughs> yeah, see, there is some... Um... Now, when I think about it, I don't know how to compress 30 years um, into an answer, uh, but I'll do my best. Um, I didn't want to go to the US, right? So I, it, I was performing actively in India right after Marin gave some, um, I used to have five to six performances a month. And it was sort of this beautiful time when dance was the central focus of my life. And... Uh, well, anyway, going to America happened, <laughs> and when and you you, you 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 said you performed at the Festival of India as well, right? Before uh, before you went to the no, US, no, oh. that was the youth youth festival of India. That oh. was uh, Russia. Yeah, it was. I was okay. actually the youngest artist in that uh, group. So they had it was uh, by the ICTR, but it was a youth festival. And what they did was um, they had one dancer represent each dance. Um, okay. Style. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I was uh, chosen to go for Bharatanatyam. Aditi Mangaldas went for Katak and uh, Pasindra went for Odissi. And so, so there was mm -hmm. each of us. I was the only person under 18 at that time. And okay. so my father accompanied me on the Mridanga. Oh. Uh, yeah. It was a very interesting, very interesting experience that whole uh, trip. But, uh, so, and I'd already, and after that I had 
yes, I did go to Germany, France, a um, few other countries before I left for the US. So I, um, so dance is, a, you know, such a, beyond all the traveling and all that, it was such a, you know, three times a week class and going, just learning, so much learning, so much of um, uh, packed into those five years, I would say, before I left the US. And then I went to the US and everything came to a standstill because you see, I went at a time when we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have email, we didn't have any of these, obviously, and uh, 1990. And uh, I went to a town, little town in New Hampshire where, uh, forget Bharatanatyam, nothing related to Indian art was going on. Okay. So it, it was sort of this huge change, right? And what uh, I always do when I'm faced with that sense of uh, upheaval is I take action. So what I did was I went about starting to organize this tour of the US. Um, and that was my first experience um, working in the US. But what happened was in the process of preparing for this uh, tour, I actually would say that for the first time in my life, I started uh, looking at my own dancing um, intensely so during my practice sessions, right? Without the discerning eye of a teacher, um, which often, which I would have had had I been in India. So it was sort of um, a necessity. It became a necessity to do that because I had to get ready for these performances and. I would, I'm actually thankful for that opportunity to have been able to uh, start at a, an early stay, early age to be able to look at my own dancing with an objective eye. And uh, going beyond that, um, I started teaching, uh, teaching at a very young age, uh, when I was, I was 22 or so. Uh, I would not have taught if I had lived in India, but I did in the US, so it's one of the ways that we connect with, uh, we used to connect with dance at least before things uh, improved in the US as far as Indian arts are concerned, right? So <clears throat> in that time also, I learned tremendously. As a teacher, I learned about myself as a human being and I learned about myself as a dancer. There is so much that was packed into those uh, 24 years of teaching, I would say that uh, helped me, you know, helped shape me to be the person I am and the artist I am. But uh, beyond that, I also did a master's in theater arts. I, um, uh, with it, the focus was of course, uh, research in Bharatanatyam. And in fact, my dissertation was uh, titled um, Sringara and Bhakti in uh, the, the relationship and reciprocity in 21st century Bharatanatyam. Um, so that process itself was, another learning experience in the sense that, you know, I, uh, understanding how to work with the American university, but research in, you know, research focus, focus in, um, in my area of uh, um, learning and expertise, I would say, to some extent. Um, it was very interesting, but along the way, I took lessons in modern dance, I took lessons in theater, I um, acted in a few plays, I took lessons in salsa dancing, all kinds of you know, interesting experiences, uh, which rounded out um, everything in many ways. And uh, one of the other things I also did while in the US was I collaborated with a lot of artists from cross genres, right? So within Indian form, um, Odissi, Bharata, I mean, Odissi, Bharatanatyam, of course, and Katak and uh, Kuchpuri, but beyond that, modern dance and theater and uh, writing, writers, poets. Um, so all these collaborations, I think, happened along the way. I, I would say I felt, you know, sort of like this boat that was traveling along this river. These 30 years were like that river. And along the way, I gathered all these riches um, as this boat, you know, and what I do with it or what I did with it, of course, is up to me, but then a lot of it sort of happened to me and uh, I took it all in, enjoyed it to the fullest uh, possible capacity. So when did you move to California from California? Yeah, 
that was within a year actually we oh, okay were, uh, okay in, yeah 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 so it was very soon so california is another country by itself in the us mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. definitely that's where i started teaching i was not uh, teaching in new hampshire i was teaching in i started teaching only in california okay okay yeah. I remember in fact you telling me in the early days when we met about how you used to dance and perform and that's how uh, you know you learn you learn to get ready on your own unlike um, the other artists in chennai and all who have this a uh, whole uh, you know sort of plethora of people to help them with various things and you said how you became very independent and you could just get ready do your hair do your makeup everything in a jiffy all on your very own so it uh, yeah taught that, that independence happened. as well definitely definitely that actually happened in russia itself because remember i was telling you it's a youth festival so they were not allowing yeah. anybody above a certain age so no makeup man nothing so okay. at, so that there i didn't have a choice so i i had to start there and of course that lesson carried forward to the us as well and uh, everybody there you know that that's what we do um and i think now dancers everywhere are very self reliant uh, but mm. i'm talking about a time when we used to have makeup men and you know the braiding the, everything was done mm. by the makeup mm. man and all mm. we did was sit and uh, I, i almost enjoy getting ready by myself now and uh, i think i always did to some extent it's sort of this meditative time you know for mm. me where mm. i get into that inner space before a performance and uh, where it's just me and this world uh, that i'm creating so i enjoy that process of getting ready by myself see we all uh, know that you know chennai is the citadel of uh, classical arts so to speak and as a dancer who is actually doing very well you moved away from chennai and then um, you you obviously kept uh, coming up, back for the season in december and all that so did you ever feel uh, alienated in uh, chennai after you moved away or did uh, chennai embrace you with ho- open arms how was that experience <laughs> you know i never really felt like i actually left chennai i don't think in the 30 oh, okay. years there's been a time that i felt like i left chennai i've been coming back here i've been living here a lot and you know i've been spending almost half a year here over the last 10 years at least that i i it's it's this sense of even now i mean even before and even now i when i say home i mean chennai i i refer to in spite of having been in the us for 30 years and everything that i have gained from that uh, life there and the experience there right so but but to answer your question chennai is Chennai, I feel, is like this, this this beautiful beast of a mother, you know, and uh, this mother that both envelops you with affection and scolds you, critiques you. So it's a place where you are, you are, you know, you better work hard. You you better work uh, hard enough to uh, to find that space, find your own space, right? and but chennai is also the place that teaches you to be yourself it teaches you that you have to i mean it's sort of bookended by these expectations from everywhere right so but then you when you work towards what you think you want to where you think you want to go with your art um and that's that in your journey that you're going through along the way it teaches you also how to just be yourself as a dancer as a person and that conviction is what helps you sustain um who you are you know as a dancer i feel and uh, obviously it was difficult um you know when uh, initially i was um coming back and forth uh, i the chennai of even 15 years ago was very different from the chennai of 30 years ago and the chennai of now is extremely different from 15 years ago so it's it's been morphing quite a bit right and so it was very difficult to navigate that space which was familiar yet not familiar to me um and i remember you know bristling at this uh, at these comments such as uh, even from organizers or uh, people sometimes saying you know in spite of uh, having gone to the us uh, you are so good at, you know you are so uh, wonderful and i would 
turn around and question what does geography have to do with quality right i mean mm-hmm. where are you where you are should not matter how um, what kind of an artist you are it's ultimately how honest are you are being to your work and to your art that determines what kind of artist you are so the quality should not be determined i feel by whether you are living here or there um <clears throat> but obviously coming here has that the the joy of uh, experiencing um the you know there's no there's no dearth of um musicians and uh, scholars and research people and it's it's all available in proximity right so that is the joy of working in chennai i would say so i i choose to embrace chennai um other than the other way around <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's uh, and and i am i have moved here now uh, yeah that that is going to be uh, one of my uh, questions uh, about uh, your uh, <laughs> move to chennai as you're talking about it so let's uh, take that uh, as well so you're moving moving actually uh, lock stock and barrel to chennai yeah yes 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 okay yes, after 30 my, years in yeah. the unis how do, how did that come about how did that decision come about you know it it it's actually not not a momentary decision my husband and i have been talking about it for uh, i would say about 10 years now um as my daughters have been um uh, growing up and finding their own life we've been talking about coming here um for a while now and i've sort of been taking those uh, actions there to to find that transition to make that transition as smoothly as possible so to me it is um like i was saying it's that it's this the space that makes me feel the most alive i would say and i mean i'm when i come here and i set foot in you know and it sounds cliched or poetic but the moment i set foot in the airport on chennai soil um there's this smile on my face and i just feel that's reason enough you know Okay. Uh, so it's an emotional it's an it's a very emotional decision i would say mm. and uh, obviously we'll have to wait and see how the journey goes but i i'm here now and enjoy mm. it <laughs> so have you already made the move packed up well, and all that thanks to the no not completely thanks to the okay. pandemic it feels like i have i've been here since uh, december i was supposed to go back a little earlier but uh, um things are locking you know the place is locking us down so i do have to go back and um settle things there but that's uh, going to be a short i'll have to make a short trip so i'm at this point i'm making a trip to the us rather than the other way down <laughs> okay okay yeah so yeah. now 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 we come to this uh, thing that is going on in you know all our lives and ah. what has been going on for over a year i mean initially we thought a few months then we said okay maybe six months we said a year and is more yeah. than a year and instead of getting better it's actually worse and so how has it been for as an artist i mean i see that you and uh, you know several other artists you've sort of uh, made this transition to the digital uh, medium so tell us about mm-hmm. what you have been doing during this uh, covid period and how this uh, transition from physical to digital medium been yeah yeah you know um gosh i was actually in uh, in london uh, act war i was invited as a guest to be uh, to be watching akram khan's uh, work with the english national ballet so i was there for a couple of days and then this, after that i was going to go on to a performance and teaching tour of europe of europe and uh, this thing hit and within a day i mean i took my probably one of the last few flights uh, to uh, the us from the, from uk and uh, when i first went back to california um, there was this sense of um, you know there was a sigh of almost a sigh of uh, relief to some extent at that time uh, thinking that now i have all this time now i have this space and time and uh, i can just sit and work on uh, you know go in, in depth into what i want to do and uh, this thought sort of uh, initially it was that's where i started but you see california is this 
monstrous, huge, large space. And it's also a very quiet space. Um, and it, it seemed to get quieter during the pandemic, right? Mm. And so all this quietness around me sort of almost um, meant that the noise inside my head increased tremendously. And this noise inside my head, I would say, got to got to me after a certain point during you know during that time and I was also going through a tough time because um, my doggy my baby was sick and he was not doing well and he was in his uh, la, you know last days and it was it was most it was a it was a very beautiful and yet sad time um, you know there were nine months the, that I was the primary caregiver for you know you know you were a job yeah. lover as well right you know and what it, and, it, like. and it happened with me as well yeah exactly I know I know right so uh, that those nine months were I, I think um, I was thankful that I was able to be there to to mother him and to take care of him but it also taught me so animals have a way of teaching you so many lessons in, uh, you know, in uh, trust and uh, just love and trust and uh, just being, you know, just being in the present moment. And so there were days when I could not, I physically could not get up and down. I just, there was, there were days when I just couldn't move. Um, and then there were certain days like rays of sunshine that I could, I could, I could just get up and dance would just happen. And so I just, grabbed onto those days and uh, slowly started working through um, old choreographies of mine, uh, you know, compositions that I had created for my students, but that did not sit quite well in my mature body. And so I decided to, well, I didn't decide, it just happened to just work, work, they just worked themselves through me. Um, and I started finding them on, you know, in my body and um, recreating them to suit who I was now, um, both physically and emotionally. And this process was very healing in many ways. And then you look around you and you feel, you realize how privileged you are. You realize that you are able to do this. You're able to sit there and work on all this, right? And the US was also going through a really tough time at that time, last year. It was, uh, the cases were very bad. And uh, my daughters were uh, home and, you know, uh, we just, it was, it was a very beautiful and a very sad time, I would say, last year. And, um, you know, now, I've come to India and since I've come to India, um, it, it's been amazing dance wise in the sense that I'm able to really, um, really go inward and work on what I want to work on. But it's also supremely saddening to see what is going on in India now, right? And what's going on around us. And human beings, you know, we are, we are in our, you know, true to our nature, very resilient beings. And we somehow navigate the, all the sadness and all the loss and somehow manage to look towards a future. We have hope. We are, you know, that's what makes us human. Um, but at the same time, it's just so disheartening on a daily basis. So in a way, I almost feel that art is probably one of the best ways one can um, connect with others. One can uh, you know, during this time, through the online medium, through whatever medium I've been teaching actively, I've been uh, performing a little bit here and there. It's all very uh, frustrating to do. I mean, obviously, I, I would rather teach in person or perform to a live audience. Like I said before, I love that energy and that communicative quality. But this is what we have now. This is what we've got. And we've got to do what we can with it and we don't know when things are going to change to what it was before if it will ever change to the to that level of uh, uh, what we are used to but we do the best we can in the meantime right so yeah so we stay resilient we stay hopeful we we stay with our arts and we keep i mean i just tell myself keep dancing even if I do it, if, whether it is some days it's five minutes, some days it's one hour, some days it's two hours, whatever it is, it's the most 
healing thing for me and uh, personally that is and you know i just hope there is an end in sight to all the suffering that is out there right now and I'm, every day i i am devastated by what we see in the news and it's it's it, it's very disheartening um but yeah we stay resilient and hopeful yeah yeah that is that is the thing when we uh, see and uh, see those images and hear uh, news from yeah. india it is it is so heartbreaking but uh, you know i won't actually i mean people are talking about they've they've started this blame game and everything i'm saying yeah, i mean this uh, is not the time for blame game let us find solutions let us see how we can make things better and uh, you know i mean hopefully yeah. uh, it will it will get better sooner rather than uh, later you know for all our sakes i i do definitely so. definitely but there's also a sense of helplessness right in all of it i mean uh, medical professionals are obviously overworked Stretched. but there's yeah. so much help there's so much uh, helplessness for the average indi- you know individual right so mm-hmm. what can one do that's the yeah. thing yeah but like you said there is there is uh, there will be a time there will be yeah. we've got to believe that there, yeah. there will be a time when all this will change so i'm that. i'm i'm very fond of uh, this uh, saying you know there's the saying that art washes away the dust of everyday life so i think actually art is uh, help so many people i mean not just the artists yeah. themselves but even the audience to get through this past year i mean we so look forward to all the digital creations that you people are putting out there no every morning we say okay so what is new what has been released and it has sort of kept us all going so yeah, you know yeah yeah it's it's been wonderful. and it takes a lot to you know it takes a lot to put it out there in the sense that um you are doing this for a phone right i mean we yeah. i mean we're used to doing it with uh, for the for an audience but you're doing it for a phone but obviously practice is something that is very personal and you know the the, the sadhana is the daily sadhana is such a such a personal and beautiful space um but now we are we are able to share it with others and i i actually believe that it is important to share that uh, share with others right because we're all ultimately trying to do the same kind of um uh, work you know we are we're all we're all in love with the form we're all in love with the arts and absolutely arts are it's not just about it 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 goes beyond healing and helping people through this time i think it is the way forward um in terms of understanding um qualities that help a human being be you know a responsible citizen in this world be um someone who can work with other people right this i i feel arts don't get enough um you know uh, credo in even in schools or even in um, the education system so arts are the way forward i feel and you know that that that's definitely uh that's definitely where the future should be for the young ones yeah so as a student of uh, you know eminent gurus like sk rajaratnam and kalaniti mami i mean you initially did their choreographies and you followed them and then uh, you started uh, doing you evolved into your own person so what uh, what yeah. inspires you in your uh, choreographies hmm what inspires me um you know i think inspiration is something that chooses to come through you um to any artist right so any artist all the beautiful ideas that you see embodied in the form of uh, choreography is something that sort of comes through you and in order for it to come through any artist i feel it's so important to open yourself up to equip yourself first of all so and that you know i i say this to my students to anyone i teach a workshop to it's it's about that um the learning the reading the the practice the daily practice that you do and just observing almost everything right the beauty in everything the sadness in everything the ugliness in everything there is uh, there is so much um it, it, the the world around us is flawed the world around us is also very beautiful and when we observe all of this when we take it all in truly take it all in and i don't mean just with the five senses beyond the five senses when we truly take it all in it manifests 
itself as inspiration in one form or the other. When, when you know, it's not as if one sits down to choreograph and that's it, you know, boom, the ideas are here, right? So when you've opened yourself up to this intuition and to uh, developing this sense of instinct, then ideas happen. And when they do, I just grab on to them, hold on to them hungrily, you know, and, and just never let go. So then, of course, it's the artist's job, it's my job to uh, find a way to make it tangible, to, to find a way to make it experiential for both me as well as the spectator. So that inspiration can come from anywhere and everywhere, right? So uh, it's not something that, um, um, that, I mean, I can look at a child, I can look at a mother, I can look at uh, the person standing at the bus stop, I can look at uh, the way the leaves on the trees are uh, blowing, I can look at a plane. I mean, all these observations, somewhere they're going into this grid that is the mind and come out as ideas. Um, you know, to, um, to give you an example, I mean, I've worked on this uh, production, Till I Rise, uh, which is a solo dance theater work um, on uh, the idea of Draupadi, um, but Draupadi in the everyday woman, right? Um, so there is this one particular, I mean, there are several moments of inspiration that came in that production, but I'll talk about one now. Um, it's sort of this uh, moment when she is, she's questioning. So I've, I have the scene there where um, uh, Karna has come to win her hand, but uh, um, you know, she is worried that um, her brother and uh, Dri and uh, she, you know, Drishadumna and uh, Karna will fight and that Drishadumna will lose in that battle. So she sort of makes up this uh, argument in my mind in that production. I took the artistic license to say that I will insult Karna to say that it is, uh, you are a charity's son, you have no right to wed me. And then in that moment, Draupadi suddenly realizes what she's done. And it was a moment of epiphany where, for her, right? Where she almost sees the entire future, that she sees the Kurukshetra war in front of her. She sees everything that is going to happen because of this one moment of um, a flawed decision on her part. And so that, Choice changed that entire, um, uh, you know, production almost. I would say, and in a way, uh, it it um, it led to the moment when the Pandavas are five, and to me, she is that unifying factor, and as a result, she is the sixth sense in that unit, so to speak. So this, you know, moments like this. And then we're talking, let's say, let's say, uh, even a, even in a varnam where the naika is um, always, you know, she's in that sense of yearning and uh, sense of joy. Uh, there are so many moments of inspiration. Um, so, so to to put it in a nutshell, I would say inspiration comes from everywhere. You just have to stay open. Okay. So here, here is a little thing which I actually, uh, you know, read about just uh, today. Because, uh, hmm. I mean, you've done your master's in theater arts and all. In fact, this is the thing that I read about today. You've written ex extensively about uh, Shringara. And I'm quoting yeah. uh, what you've written. When I'm on the stage getting ready to do a Varnam, for example, the moment I stand in that light, I am her, the Naika, but I'm still me. Who she is in that composition enters my being. And who I am colors her being. I mean, I found that such a wonderful thing. But again, uh, in this day and age, I mean, in 2021, with millennials performing Bhartanatyam, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, how, how relevant is this uh, Shringara? And is it always going to retain its importance and uh, uh, relevance uh, in this dance form? You see, Renuka, um... Is there a world without Shrigara? You know, this it's the most universal emotion, first of all. Um, and when we look at a Naika, ultimately, I'm, I'm thinking of each and every single one of us is a Naika, as a Naika. 
aren't we all constantly yearning for something that we don't have something that is not with us something that is beyond oh. us yeah. we're trying to Definitely. you know exactly so it can be material it can be um metaphysical it can be emotional it can be so many things but we're always in yearning human that is human nature what else does a naika do but yearn and to me when i look at a varnam when i say i am her it's not actually about the god that she's addressing i mean i shiva is my favorite i always end up choosing varnam on shiva but it's not about shiva necessarily it is not about describing his physical attributes or his uh, you know however amazing he is it's not about describing him or extolling him it's about my yearning the varnam is about my complete surrender and yearning and needing to be with that external energy so in that sense um it, you're channeling every human being i would say so every human being is an icon male female whatever it is whoever it may be um mm. so the varnam to me is actually the most beautiful most challenging composition to work on because it provides this rich um foundation rich uh, space where you can where you can go delve in you can dive into the deep end and you can just stay there for the longest period of time and sort of navigate this uh, this this yearning this sense of yearning um and and come out with perhaps no denouement you know perhaps no um closure to that yearning there is still yearning sometimes at the end of the varnam so it's all of this reveling in this yearning that we do as human beings that is sort of translated into the varnam so to me the varnam is one of the most beautiful relevant compositions in the bharatanatyam repertoire and uh, shringaram is um is 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 like this you know is like this lotus flower i would say you know the lotus is is sort of connected to the sky the earth and the water right so the, the there are already the three elements there so this lotus is this this flower that sort of respond to all three of those elements and uh, opens up when needed but closes when not needed and to me uh, uh, shringaram is sort of along the realms of you know that 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 uh, metaphor um because we as human beings when we are interacting in a world in a complex world we are you know and shringaram is not necessarily only between krishna and radha or you know man and woman right so there's so much beyond that uh, uh, you know in in a world where there is a lot of apathy and a lot of um sense of disengagement i think shringaram is ever more important um uh, to express to feel to emote on and uh, to enjoy absolutely Oh, that's that's really a be- be- beautiful answer, Vidya. So that's let's now, <laughs> so let's uh, now move on to you know performances per se. I mean, you have performed in India, you performed elsewhere in the world. I mean, you've mm. travelled and performed in the US, all over Europe. So, what is the difference uh, uh, in your experience in performing uh, in India as well as uh, you know outside of uh, India? is there a tangible difference well um tangible yes um see i you know i often say this no matter where you're performing such a ball let me frame the the response in this uh, with this statement um no matter where you're performing you are you are who you are i mean i am at least i choose to be who i am i am the same dancer whether i'm dancing in paris or in chennai or in you know the bay area or anywhere um i bring to the stage a certain vulnerability i am willing to share and bear what i have worked on and i am sharing it with the audience right now what is the difference in that equation it is the audience it is the spectator that comes into the theater now the combined energy between these two sort of this meeting point between these two is what differs right um and that can change wherever they are in the sense that 
every audience member comes in with this conditioning of who they are they from the moment they're born i would say they're conditioned where they're born how they're born what kind of family they're born what how they've been raised and then all the way leading up to that day when they arrive at the performance how was their day did they fight with somebody on the way did they have a lovely encounter with somebody on the way all of that determines how they respond to a performance so it's not going to change what i do right on uh, uh, because that's what what i do is what i do having said that i feel that um, when i go to europe for example there is uh, there is an open response when you know audiences come into the theater you feel you feel that openness you feel that willingness to experience willingness to um take what you're giving them and either you you can they can like it or dislike it that's not the uh, the discussion here but they're willing to receive it with openness right so that openness you feel so that sort of lets you be in many ways and then on the on the other end um, of the spectrum we have a place like chennai let's say where you know it's it's sort of there are it's bookended by expectation from me from the audience from um from everyone who is there there is a there is this sort of heady nervous energy which also propels you to give your best in a different way so each is i would say just different in that sense so the equation that the audience brings in on any given day can change no matter what um but i it's my job to to stay true to what i want to do ultimately and uh, not feel responsible for what happens beyond that once i my work and my responsibility is in, is at home when i practice when i work on you know what i'm doing and then when i'm there it's a shared responsibility between me and the audience and then once i put it out there it's for um the audience or the spectator wherever they are to receive it and and give me back that energy or not that a very individual one on one equation almost between the artist and each spectator i would say so do you have a favorite performance uh, place mm. <laughs> um oh. you know it, yeah I, I, i would say i love performing in paris for sure um it's the, it's given me one of the most um some of the most amazing experiences uh, of performing and then um and then of course chennai is always awesome so it's it's again that's what i'm saying right so it's the day it's also any given day when you're going into the performance i don't you know say i'll give you an example right i've talked about this before before as well um you know there was this um, performance here in prashagana sabha right um and i was um i was ready i was getting ready i was getting putting on my makeup and everything and this news about if you remember this was many years ago uh these children in peshawar in a school were all uh, um shot and killed and this news came through right and when you hear news like this you think what am i doing what am i doing you know um putting on a costume and makeup and going on stage to perform and it just hit me and i just i was not sure how i was going to go through this it, things like this affect me a lot so when i then i went on stage and i said okay i have i am a professional i have to go perform people are there in the audience so i did that and for the first few minutes i was not able to give myself right so but then this dance has this power and this strength and this energy that uh that you don't have a choice but to surrender to it um you know i've always said dance is like my sister um i'm an only child like i told you so i've always considered dance to be my sister the one i can fight everything to and the one i can throw all of or everything all of my good bad everything at and uh, so this is what i did on that day also right that's and that's an example that i'm giving you and sure enough after about you know um half an hour into the performance i was 
lost. I was lost in that uh, in in the beauty of the art. Um, and at the end of it, there was uh, this woman from the audience who came up and said, "You know, I was very affected by the news this morning, and this sort of made me feel a, at least a moment's uh, sense of peace." And that was enough for me, you know, mm -hmm. that one person felt that way. And this is what I was saying before also, right? So that mm. uh, the redeeming quality of art and uh, um, it, it goes beyond, um, you know, just being able to heal, right? It's, 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 yeah, it's almost surreal in that sense, the way, the, the, the effect it can have on any, any human being. So, so yeah, so I think, um, I'm sorry, where, where were we? What was your question again? <laughs> I'm a bit lost. It was no, you, you, you were talking about, uh, you know, your experience dancing after the, uh, I mean. Right, you were asking about the favorite play. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, so, so and that's what I'm saying. So it's, it's necessarily, um, when you say place, it's, it's, you, it's not about the geography for me. It's not about, you know, that. So it's about the day. So the place, I would define it as the place or the space that I'm in on any yeah. given day. Yeah. yeah, where I am on that day is what determines whether it becomes a favorite performance or a not so favorite performance. <laughs> yeah, and we all have both, right? So. Okay, so we, we hear from the grapevine that something new is brewing in your life. Uh, will you, will you share, <laughs> share with us, share with us, uh, do tell us something about it. What's uh, yes. what's this new thing brewing in your life? <laughs> Gosh, Renuka. <laughs> so, and, yeah, it's it, it, you know it's you're talking about uh, the money that uh, Yes, but I'm, I'm guessing. I'm, I'm, I'm yes, guessing. yes, obviously. Um, <laughs> so it you know so the thing is actually for about ten years now, um, I was um, approached by them to do some role or the other in most of, you know, the, all the, whatever movies uh, Mani sir was making over the years. And uh, for some reason or the other, it fell through. It was either, you know, I, I was there or it was, the role wasn't, uh, you know, satisfying enough for to, various reasons. And I even did a screen test a few years ago and uh, then, you know, he, I was, almost signed on and then the project itself fell through. So all these things happened. And then it took a pandemic to, <laughs> for, for this to finally come to fruition, right? So I've, it's a Pony and Selvan, yes, I am doing a, 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 the Maharani's role in it. And it is sort of- uh, which, which role is that? I mean, actually I know a little bit, you know, when the, for the Tamil yeah. language festival here, Pony and Selvan, yeah. the, the stage play was staged here. In yeah. fact, the three yeah. hour spectacle and I had to write a re review of it. And I said, without knowing about it, how can I write the review? So I, I went know, and, right. uh, you know, learned about the play and the characters and, oh, what a yeah. fabulous production it is. It's a magnum opus, right? Yeah. It is, it is yeah. one of the most stunning works of literature, I would yeah. say. Um, I'm not sure I'm at liberty to uh, divulge oh, okay. the role. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm so sorry uh, because I uh, haven't really got that permission and I don't want to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go back. Let's, let, yeah. let that be uh, a suspense. Because they are, yes, they are, they are, you know, in the process of publicity and all that, right? So that will have yeah. to take its own course. So we've done, but I've done, I've completed uh, uh, several days of shooting already, but there are a few more days left, but given the circumstances we are in, we don't know how and when we're going to manage that. Uh, but it's been, I can say that it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. I mean, um, you know, for me, it, 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 as a Bharatanatyam, I mean, I've got, I used to get roles as a teenager, but that's a totally different kind of uh, time. And, you know, when films were in a different space at that time. Now, as, uh, as someone who wants to, um, be engaged with film or theater with roles that that I enjoy right? that that I would that would sort of work with uh, um, the same thing that I talk about in dance as in the character and me you know sort of being able to navigate that and understand to enjoy that process 
that's the reason I wanted to act. So it's not about doing, you know, any uh, role that comes uh, one way. But the process, I mean, he is, he is obviously an amazing director. The way he is Mr. Manigatnam for uh, a reason. And it's been one of uh, the most uh, amazing experiences in terms of learning, learning the process of being outside of yourself, right? So we are used to in, in the dance field, especially, I think we're all in these solo bubbles. <laughs> so as, especially solo dancers, we're in these solo bubbles and we're used to uh, interacting with our own little cocoon and being, you know, uh, even in practice or uh, rehearsal or ideation or conceptualization, we are with ourselves. Um, but here, the the theme that comes together, the way there is attention to detail from his end or to every small thing that every small person or character or anyone is doing, um, and this vision that is there already, which he somehow manages to translate to the actors and to everybody uh, on, uh, you know, in the crew and on set is brilliant. It's a brilliant process to watch. And um, I think, uh, I mean, obviously film is a different beast compared to the theater where you have that luxury of time to get into character, whereas you don't here. So it's a totally different challenge and it's been a completely, uh, and, you know, exhilarating experience in the sense of, completely going out of my comfort zone. And I have half the time have no idea what I'm doing <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm enjoying it as a result. And uh, it is, I, that's something I thrive on. I, I don't, I like to take the challenges on as they come um, and, uh, you know, delivering dialogue in Sindhamar for, you know, I, I, it, 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 that is first of all, uh, one of, you know, one challenge enough mm -hmm. and uh, beyond that, there's so much more in, in a production like this right so um yeah so it's been amazing uh, i i will cherish this experience for sure and i cannot wait to for it to come out and <laughs> hopefully next yeah. year yeah yeah we, we, we can't wait either to see you on the big screen <laughs> yeah and that too for me and selvan as a movie right. I mean, which has been in the sort of uh, so many people have thought about it but actually not translated it to the big screen right yeah right right Yep, yep, exactly. Oh, so so yeah, well, I'm looking yeah. forward to it along with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we are uh, actually reaching the end of our uh, conversation. Well, I mean, you know, it's been it's been an hour and uh, wow. it's been so nice talking to you. So I just have one last uh, question for you. You have danced uh, in uh, CIFAS, you're aware of CIFAS and the work mm. that CIFAS and its students and alumni have been doing in dance over the years. So uh, is there... Uh, any, uh, you know, word, words of wisdom for uh, the CIFAS dance <laughs> students? Any, any advice that you have for young and upcoming uh, dancers? Mm, mm, oh, gosh. Um, makes me feel really old. Uh, <laughs> it, it, see, see, just like, you know, I just feel like CIFAS, um, from what I have experienced of it, it, it's sort of this microcosm that represents Singapore almost, I would say, because Singapore is this most efficient, most organized, most um, self-reliant and, you know, this a rich history of being able to handle whatever comes its way. And I feel CIFAS has adapted or, you know, adopted a, uh, that into its microcosm, I would say. And the rich um, history of culture and, you know, developing something outside of uh, Chennai, which I am familiar with as well, is, uh, is, is a beautiful thing. So who am I to advise anyone? I don't, I'm not sure. Um, but dancers, obviously, everywhere, you know, it's, um, we're all in the, in this journey together, I would say, I mean, when I, uh, well, not, we're in our solo bubbles, but together in the sense that we're all aiming towards that, uh, that similar goal, which somehow, you're able to get close to, but then it goes a little further. And then you're, you're constantly, you know, um, trying to reach that goal. And in that is the beauty. Because to me, if you've attained something or if you've reached a goal, then I don't know what's left because then where is the excitement? Where mm -hmm. is the beauty? Where is the joy? What are you working, of, uh, are you working towards? Right. And uh, so I just, that's what I want to say, you know, is, is 
never feel like you have accomplished or you have uh, gone somewhere or you've done something right because we're we're sort of it's passing through us you know we are um, and we do the best we can and stay on course you know stay on course with whatever you choose to do and i would say one very important thing as well which is something i try to emulate as well um is while on this journey in dance try and find balance in life as well when i say balance um balance between what you choose to do with dance and and your personal right and balance between for me it was balance between um being in a western culture versus finding a uh, staying close to my roots here in chennai and the balance between family and uh, dance and ultimately all of it rounds you out around you out as a human being around you out as a dancer Individual. and mm and so that intersection between life and art is all important i feel you cannot be you know you, so so try and always um aim for that balance is what i would say to young dancers and um yeah and keep learning <laughs> never stop learning thank you so much vidya for this wonderful and scintillating conversation that we've had i've really enjoyed uh, talking yeah. to you it's been wonderful thank you for agreeing to do this once again and i hope we can uh, meet post this uh, covid perhaps here in singapore or uh, in uh, chennai and uh, yes. you know and we are we are looking forward to uh, whatever work uh, that uh, you have uh, in store for us uh, both yes, in bharatanatyam and, and uh, there is a lot yeah, going <laughs> yeah yes. so we are, we 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 are looking forward to it thank you so much it's been wonderful talking to you that. yeah my absolute pleasure thank you so much for having me Thank you. <laughs> Mirde Shankara Bharadanai Sadani Nebu Kondu Mai Almi